So, a couple of days ago, I got a message from Florencio saying, Loco, I want you to have this replayed. And there's a little heart emoji, and he says, it's one of my favorites. So, this morning, I decided to load up the replay, and I noticed that the game downloaded a bunch of patches. I didn't realize until I just now clicked the play button and until I checked out the spawning tool website, which is where he linked me to replay, uh, that apparently this particular game was played on July 7th, 2019. So this replay is coming up on two years of age. I am not entirely sure what to expect. But I mean, considering Florencio says that it's a good one, I, I think we should be in for a fun game of, uh, of Terran versus Frodo's, right? So spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, New Repugnancy, a map that I haven't seen in like a year and a half. With the blue Terran SCVs, we have Florencio, who apparently is in Clan Fook... Ooh. <clears throat> right. His opponent in the opposite corner, with the, uh, the red Frodo's pieces. Also in Diamond League, he goes by the name of Jawa. All right, now, all I know about this particular game is that it's a really long one. So, generally speaking, I mean, over the years I've casted a lot of viewers who've been at games as well, right? Generally speaking, especially on the, uh, I would say, like, Diamond League and below, there's, like, a, a bunch of moments in the game where it's just a bit of a stalemate and nothing's really happening. So, I may end up fast-forwarding uh, through parts of this particular match. Now, Florencio, of course, I mean... If you have never seen a game of his before, real quick, he uh, he likes to play the game a little bit differently than everyone else. I've always wondered, though, like, he, he likes to play strategies that he comes up with himself, but I've always wondered, like, if he were to play just normal builds, how much higher would he climb up on the ladder? You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why we have a so-called standard. Don't get me wrong, though. I love the I love the variety in the build orders and the craziness that he comes up with, and he somehow, some way, seems to always make it work. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's one of... I would like to see, like, one account, I guess, from Florencio. I know you're gonna be listening to this as well, Florent. Um, I would like to see one account where it just plays super normal. See how far we can climb. I guess new, or normal build orders, though, are, uh, you know, also something that takes a, a while to learn. Anyways, we'll find out together what ends up going down in this particular game. New Repugnancy, real quick. Let me uh, show you around, because I can't imagine maybe you've never seen this game. Huh? Okay. Maybe you've never seen this map before, or maybe you haven't seen it in a very long time. Natural is pretty straightforward. Third base is pretty straightforward. You can also alternatively take it over here. I would say the most interesting part of this particular map is the center bases. So there's two center bases over here and siege tanks, if I recall correctly, can like shoot over, you know, the little whatever it is, like the collapsed buildings or whatever, right? There's also a statue of a marine apparently in the center. Anyways, it's been a long time since I've seen this map. I don't remember it being particularly good. I think we mostly saw it in Terran versus Terran, if I recall correctly. Because pretty much everyone uh, ended up vetoing that map specifically because of Siege Tanks. At least that's what I recall. I might be completely wrong, but... Yeah, anyways. Looks like our Protoss player over here has opened up with a, you know, semi-normal build. When you think about it, build orders haven't really changed that much. I mean, we do see some... Okay, well, this is a bit silly. Uh... Okay. Uh, build orders haven't changed that much in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, there's a lot of optimization, though, that has happened depending on the different maps and all that as well. Okay. So, he's going for a single stalker straight into a robo bay. This is extremely risky and loads of different builds will just straight up kill you if you play something like that. I like how he decides to start up oh, apparently two units right here uh, inside of the gateway as well after the freaking reaper gets dealt with. Obviously, the normal is to go for a uh, an adept and then a stalker, but uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently, flow over here is gonna be going for a double factory follow up as well. Already though, banking up a whole lot of resources. Now I know some of you are looking at this right now, right? And you're like, oh my god, this is in Diamond League. So the thing is, the leagues in StarCraft 2 are percentage based, right? At least they should be. I know the North American ladder at this point in time is a little bit broken. Apparently, a lot of people are currently sitting in Master League, even with, like, 2K MMR, uh, which is a bug, okay? I'm sorry for those of you that were cheering because you got promoted to Master League. Uh, that, that just so happens to be a bug. However, the leagues in StarCraft 2, at least, like, they've adjusted the percentages a lot as well over time. Uh, but the leagues in StarCraft 2 are percentage based, meaning that I don't really know exactly what the numbers are, but say it's, like... I don't know, 2% or something of the total player base that's in Master League, right? Um, I think it's like 10% or so that's in Diamond League. Anyways, um, the point is that the skill level obviously goes up 
over time, especially because the ranking is percentage-based. So if you were Master League in 2012 and you haven't played the game since, you're probably gonna be Gold League at best. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry for those of you that are going around the internet bragging that they once upon a time were Grandmaster in Wings of Liberty. Um, you'll obviously be able to climb back up, but um, yeah, the, the ranking system is brutal in StarCraft, and even just staying at the same rank uh, is still gonna... You know, it's still gonna require quite a lot of practice. If you uh, if you don't play for months, or maybe even longer than that, you'll probably find yourself at least, uh, not just because you're rusty, obviously, but you'll probably find yourself a very significant chunk of MMR down from where you normally would be. Now, what in the world is going on, man? We saw a very quick armory and then also an engineering bay. One gas, okay, has, okay. And then we see Widow Mines being produced out of two factories, but not with reactors. No, they're just coming out Standardly, okay, well, the opponent just now sent in an hallucinated phoenix after going for the third nexus. So he's like, hey, I want to go third nexus. Let me see if it's safe. After planning down a third nexus. A little bit ironic. He's going to go into Temple Archives right now as well. So he's going to be getting the Stormy Boys out. And there is going to be that Colossus. Okay, so, yeah, I think that this is a, a pretty passive start, right? Shall I speed up the game a little bit? So we can get to the action. There we go. Speed it up. I don't know exactly how much we're gonna expect here, though, or how much we should expect. What? Oh. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the little red dot on the minimap was and why the Protoss had vision over here. Apparently, Probius was, uh... I don't know, channeling his inner James Bond or something. Oh, there's a doggo. You know what I like about the dogs in this game? So, all of the other critters in the game are targetable, right? So you can click on them, so you can actually kill them as well but not the dogs. Although, apparently what I have found out as well is that if you use Sonic Storm, the dog will... <clears throat> it's the saddest thing ever, okay? But I'm glad the map developers at the very least made it so that these dogs are not targetable. The Ursa Dons or whatever they're called, you can, you can get rid of those. I, I don't really care. But. Anyways, um... Yeah, this, this has been a very passive first eight minutes of this particular game. So... Mr. Jawa apparently has decided that this is the moment to move out. He's got himself a, uh, <laughs> a curious army. Obviously, what you do have to keep in mind is that this is a couple of patches ago as well, right? So the game has changed quite a bunch over the years. Double Ghost Academy, by the way. So how many Widow Mines are we at? Uh, we have eight right now. Okay, we have a lot of Widow Mines. That seems to be the main, the main defense here. Java is moving out without a prism and without an observer, so he has absolutely no clue about what's actually happening. He's gonna try and scout over here. You can see a couple of potholes. Siege tanks on the high ground though, liberators here as well, ready to siege up. I don't think you necessarily want to push into that, my man. Uh, no, without an observer, I don't... Oh, well, he's got storm. He can storm... Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh my! That was painful. Oh, my inner Protoss player just cringed really bad. Okay, um, so these Widow Mines have gotten a little bit of value done. There is a, uh, a single pylon over here that will be spotted right now as well by Florencio, who's gonna be floating the third co- Hey, there's another dog! I don't think I've ever seen that dog before. Oh, it's a different skin for the dog, isn't it? Oh. Anyways, um... <laughs> Sickest seed shop of all time. Accidentally grabs himself a, uh, a zealot, that's nice. Anyways, this is a couple of patches ago. I don't think in, uh, in this, at this level of play it should really matter all too, too much. Now the Widow Mines apparently are just walking to... Alright, uh, the back of the mineral line. There's a lot of probes, by the way, or sorry, a lot of photon cannons here set up. But it looks like the Sewer Mermaid himself is not gonna be able to get too much done. Although Jabba really wants to get him some work done. He's like, you know what, let me donate a couple stalkers, maybe? Okay. Well, 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 that went surprisingly, surprisingly smoothly. All right, double Stargate as a follow-up. Couple more gateways here as well. <laughs> this is one of the most common things you always see on the ladder, okay, guys? Sticking with a strategy is usually a good idea. So my man, the Protoss player here, is going from Robotech into Templar Tech, into Stargate Tech, into Twilight Tech. Like, he's getting all, all of the bits and pieces. Now, obviously, that can be a very good idea, especially if you, um... 
you know, have a lot of economy and you can afford it. But if you do it like... Oh, there's a dark shrine here as well. If you do it at a fleet beacon, if you, <laughs> if you do all of this off of such a small eco... I know he's at 80 workers right now, so maybe it's not too, too much, but... Usually sticking with the plan is a bit of a better idea. So, interestingly enough, both Liberators and Widow Mines cannot actually target any of these pylons. There's a couple of Dank Templar moving across right now. Uh, you guys are literally... Okay. <sighs> Alright, you guys were literally uh, standing on top of a couple of mines. The missile turret eventually gives a detection. And just like that, this will be cleaned up. Okay, so... We have... Tempest coming up out of the Protoss player. And Thor's coming up out of Florencio as soon as he's no longer supply blocked. There you go. He finished up a couple depots, instantly hit a supply block again. Heck yeah, dude. Just, yeah, no, hell yeah, right? It's much better. Hell yeah, dude. There it is. Okay. So, Mr. Protoss apparently has decided to move out. Goes for another robo because, you know, he can. This time around, he has brought a Twilight Council, or sorry, a, uh, a Prism Rotter to the, to the mix. And there's a couple of observers as well. I don't think there was an observer with the last fight, right? It, before it was in the middle of my screen and everyone in the comment section saw it. And not myself. That's okay. That happens. Plus three comes up as well. Cool. Oh my god. Don't tell me the Terran player is gonna try and bait this Protoss into the Widow Mines again. We've already seen this happen a couple times. Now... Apparently, there's a tactical nuke currently heading across the map. The probes, though? Okay, they will be evacuated and out of there together with the stalkers. Except for these two. Oh, you guys! Oh, is that... That was just a ritual sacrifice there by, uh, by Java, okay? Java over here did not feel too confident about those two probes. Blood sacrifices had to be made. Now, with that taken care of, though, Mr. Protoss over here, okay, he wants to get rid of the, of the missile turret and probably the Liberator. I'm a little bit concerned now <coughs> that he's accidentally gonna walk into so many Widow Mines. Oh my god, well here comes the Protoss. He's gonna charge forward on top of all of those mines. Ooh, still, Florencio has loads of resources in the bank and very little economy here in general, so his army is rather small. That being said, I mean, it's spread out quite nicely, right? So he does have the siege tanks right now on the high ground helping out in this particular engagement too. I think this, uh, this ghost may have very well tried to get another fight going. Okay, not bad at all here by the Protoss, actually. The only thing that he's doing right now that I do not entirely agree with is dropping all of his gas on a bunch of Archons. Probably not a bad idea. How many gateways is he on? He's on nine gateways, okay. Probably not a bad idea to just warp in a couple Zealots. I don't know if you can necessarily break this, though. I don't think so. Oh my god, no, 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 the Winner Mines! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Widow Mines and nukes, huh? Ooh, there's actually double nukes floating across the map. I like it. Two ghosts over here holding hands. This is in 2019, guys, so it's before social distancing was the norm. It's okay. A couple of stalkers over here are also sacrificing themselves for this planetary fortress. And it looks like actually we had uh, more of the Protoss army being blown up. All right. I'm trying to think which patch this was. 2019 is really quite a long time ago, and uh, at least when it comes to the details in StarCraft 2, they've, they've made a lot of changes over the years that don't necessarily seem super significant, but uh, it does, yeah, it does add up, right? Like small things, like for example, I think that with, with this high impact mode that these Thors are in, so Thors have two different modes. You have the regular one and then the high impact one where they bring out their six shoulder pads, right? Uh, this one should be at 11 range. But one very significant change, for example, is that they have reduced the range of Brute Lords from 12 to 10, right? So effectively speaking, Brute Lords used to counter Thors, but nowadays, uh, Thors are really good against Brute Lords, right? Um, and it's these little things that they've changed over the years that um, really do make a difference in those big fights. Now, once again, I don't really know exactly how much of a difference it makes Ooh. In, uh, in Diamond League games, but still noticeable. There is an Observer over here. I think the nukes will once again fly across, though. There we go. Dude, I'm a sick cameraman. Did you see that? Okay, the boys will be pulled to defend against this. There is an observer, like I said. These ghosts, though. Oh, is he Is he going to lose two ghosts right here to probes? At least the Nexus will... 
<laughs> at least the Nexus will land. And uh, the probes will have to find a new base to mine from. Well, there's another base finishing up the six. Well, at the same time, there is an army right here of Zealots and a couple of Dank Templar that are gonna try and fight the Planetary Fortress, though, but it's gonna be defended by Thors and Widow Mines. Just your regular game of Terran vs. Protoss, guys. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, by the way, if you have an awesome game of StarCraft as well, uh, you can submit it to replays at loco.tv. Just attach the .sc2 replay file uh, to the email address. And maybe I'll make fun of your game here uh, next time around, okay? Like, so far, this is not really a game that I've made a whole lot of fun of. It's just uh, that I'm looking at this, right? And I wonder what would happen if Florencio would spend his money and he would literally just F2 and then A move to the other side of the map. <laughs> like... He's got a lot of units. He hasn't really seen the other side of the map yet. Now, I do like what Protoss is doing here, okay? One of the reasons why Mech is usually not considered to be a good build against Protoss is specifically because of these units that the Protoss player is making. Tempests are pretty good at picking off units, assuming you micro them decently well and you don't lose them to Widow Mine in the... Or Widow Mines, rather, in the case of this Protoss. But Immortals especially. Immortals deal bonus damage to Armored. And obviously, pretty much this entire Protoss are Or Terran Army, rather, is gonna be Armored, right? So, he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage with those units. This is obviously before they made the Immortal a little bit more expensive, right? It's also before the Tempest ability improvement where they deal more damage to structures, right? It's also still actually with the Zealot impact damage. So, this is a significant change that they made once upon a time. Um, look, this Protoss player does have charge done. But um, basically the way that changes is that nowadays Zealots are just way faster, which I really, really like. It's one of the best changes they have made. Now here we go, by the way. Look at that damage that the Armored Boys bring to the party. Yeah, you can out-repair it maybe, but no. No, that's way too many Immortals. Okay, nicely done right here by Protoss. Making the right units here. A couple nukes, by the way, are once again coming up. This SCV, by the way, is uh, committed to staring off into the distance. It's a little bit sad, maybe, but I, I don't actually mind this position for the Protoss too much. I feel like he could even commit here. Yeah, look, dude, look at the Immortals. The Immortals absolutely trash this. They have plus three as well, so they do a lot of damage. That being said, now the Whale Mines are moving forward. They're gonna try and... <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, they're gonna try and blow up this entire Protoss. Okay, except for you guys, apparently. You're not gonna retreat, but they're gonna try and blow up the entirety here of the Protoss army, and they've done a pretty decent job. I don't think Thors are gonna cut it. I do not believe in the power of the Thor here. Here comes the here come the boys again. They uh, will be uh, sending more nukes towards the other side of the map. So wait, let me get this straight. It's ghosts with nukes, widow mines and Thors against this army. What's better than one nuke? Two nukes, clearly. There you go. Okay, a couple more immortals will be coming up. Protoss does still have a good amount of eco, though. He's doing a good job macroing here. Although he's not doing a very good job spending his money, which I guess is part of macroing, huh? Does he still have the observers? He sure does. And there we go. Okay. So, Java is once again maxed out. He's like, you know what? I'm once again gonna try and go for a move out. The question is, will he once more end up losing literally everything <laughs> to, uh, to a couple of Widow Mines? Well... Florencia would like that very much. Okay. Hugging the planetary, or the soon-to-be planetary. Couple of them on the ramp here as well. Oh, well, here come the Widow Mines once again, but nicely done right here by Java. Don't know if that was intentional, but a bunch of the Zealots did not charge, uh, you know, to the, to the Widow Mines right away. And he's going to be easily able to kill this base. Good job right here by the Protoss. He's just gonna waltz forward. He lost that high ground vision right now, though, that the, uh... Oh, God. I feel like you need to move the Tempest a little bit closer, man, so you can kill that Siege tank on the high ground a little bit easier. Ah, uh, these... These trades are definitely not ideal. Protoss, though? I mean, this guy should be playing Zerk. He's expanding all over the map. Oh, my... The Widow Mines! He's expanding all over the map, but he's trying to get the most out of the army that he's got. This time around, he's not going to be able to kill the Planetary Fortress, but right here, if you look at the resources lost, yeah. This is what I was a little bit concerned for. There's only been one sentry, by the way, in all of these battles as well, which is just, uh, not ideal. Alright, Guardian Shield is pretty good. I mean, not as good against Terran Mech, I suppose, as it is against, uh, Terran Bio, but 
still a very helpful situation to be in. Okay. So, at what point will Flo actually start moving? Because he's been... You know, he's been happily making nukes. He's been dealing a bunch of damage. But the Prolos player is still heavily outmining him. We're now talking 104 probes. Okay, a couple more Zealots apparently want to die. It's a little bit sad. All right. <laughs> the most ambitious Zealots we've seen in a while. Um... No, but he's got a hundred and something probes, right? And that's absolutely fantastic right here for the, uh, for the Protoss player because he's playing in an awfully inefficient style. But he's slowly but surely, you know, getting the resources that he needs to max out constantly. I mean, look at this. He's once again got a massive bank. Here come the nukes, I'm assuming anyway. Oh, okay, they want to spot or they want to show themselves real quick first. Yeah, they want to give the, the, the opponent a chance right here to spot them first. Guess the nukes weren't entirely done yet anyway, right? So... Oh, actually, no. He's only got one nuke. Additional flyer upgrades as well. More Tempest here coming up, too. This is the first time, though, that we really do see Florencio moving out. This is an interesting army. It's mostly Thors, but they've been doing quite well. Okay. Tactical nuke. Once again. Gotta be flying across the map on top of the static defense. Protoss army is currently moving on over in this direction. The Nexus, of course, will be got. Probius, no! Pro Probius! Oh my god. Like, la 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 la, let me get my minerals. Five minerals for the Nexus. <laughs> Poor guy. Alright. I feel like uh, maybe he could continue pushing for a little bit, but I guess Florencio is like, nah, that's supposed to be my base a little while later into this. Oh, oh, he's baiting! Dude, Florencio. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's pretty good at baiting, but not as uh, not as good as me, okay? Uh, I'm the master at baiting, is what I'm trying to say. But no, can I still make that joke? I've made that joke in at least a dozen YouTube videos by now, okay? There's gonna be, like, one guy that hasn't heard it yet that thinks I'm really funny. Thanks to that one guy, man. I appreciate you, dude. So, I would go out on a limb here and, and say that um, 35 probes and 4 mineral patches is not ideal. The same over here, 21 on four mineral patches, probably not ideal, right? There's a whole lot of, uh, oh, here come the Widow Mines, or sorry, the, the Hellions. Well, actually, I think that Florencio is giving his opponent uh, a chance to get rid of some of those probes. It's actually not too bad. No, I think this is actually fine. He's doing his opponent a favor. I think over 100 workers is a bit much. Okay, he immediately starts up more probes again, though. I know, I don't know about that, but uh, he's currently boosting the Nexus as well. Nicely done. Uh, <laughs> well, not building anything. Um, actually, is this still the patch where Chrono Boost is permanent? No, it's not, right? It's the patch before Battery Overcharge, though. You can see that the Nexus over here is lacking abilities. Uh, so he's got he's got Recall, he's got Probes, uh, that he can Chrono Boost as well, but he... Huh. Doesn't have the, uh, the Battery Overcharge yet. Which is such a massive change, by the way. I can't believe I forgot about that. Not having battery overcharge would change Protoss entirely right now in 2021. It'd be insane. Okay. Once again, the Widow Mines are going to reposition themselves because the Protoss player has decided that it's time to move forward. I don't think you want to go in there, man. So one problem here is that this base has been completely unscouted, right? Luckily here for, uh, for the Protoss, Florencio hasn't really been mining from it either. And you know what? He's actually going to find out about it at this point, which is not bad at all. Triple Colossus, by the way, now has a follow-up as well. Not actually a terrible idea, considering there's so many of those Widow Mines. I don't think Disruptors would be a bad choice, though, right? Like, imagine a couple of Disruptors just, you know, rolling forward on top of all of this static, uh, this static Terran Bowl. Oh, my God. Are the Widow Mines going to try and intercept this army? Oh, my God. Is he going to try and intercept? Oh, I feel like he could have. Okay, he's got a recall. Protoss, that is. Not everything. But at least as many things as he could fit inside of that circle. So even though Florencio just saw the army last all the way up top, he right now will encounter it once again at the bottom. I mean, there are disruptors in this game, right? They introduced disruptors, if I recall correctly, in Legacy of the Void. It's actually crazy. Like, the amount of units and the amount of changes that we've seen over the years in StarCraft, the things that we take for granted now, like, wasn't a Ravager, for example, added in Legacy of the Void? Like, imagine the game right now without a Ravager. Uh, Java, my man, you're already at 200 supply. I don't think you need 20 additional pylons here. Give or take 20. Yeah, see? It's 
okay. Ooh, the Colossi are not doing a poor job either, though, but you do need detection here to actually gun down all of those uh, Widow Mines. Got a feeling that mining from this base might be a little bit tricky. Or at least mining in a different sense of the word, huh? There we go. Oh my god, the Thors. The Thors are trying to go around. Oh, no, 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 Protos! Protos, what in the world? You know they're there! Bro! What was that, man? Yeah, there comes the Observer. I don't think you uh, want to face tank all of that necessarily, man. I, I don't think that might be the ideal. Oh, well. No, so there's definitely Disruptors available for the Protoss player, even though it's 2019. I think Disruptors have been around since, like... I don't know, 2015? Is that when Legacy came out? I think so. Man, it's been a while already. Wasn't the Adept... I think the Adept the Disruptor, right? I think those two got added. For Terran... I think it's Cyclones and Liberators, I want to say? Imagine the game without those two. That's insane. And Protoss... Or what did Zerg get? Zerg got Ravagers? Uh, Lurkers? Is it Lurkers? Ravagers and Lurkers? Yeah, I think so. Wait, is it Ravagers? Or are Ravagers Heart of the Swarm? I remember when they first added all of those things to the game. Oh, no. No, no, no! <laughs> the Observers get killed. Uh, I remember when they first added, like, you know, things like Ravagers to the game and nobody really was sure how to use them efficiently, right? Remember when they first added Adepts? This is Boomer Loco, by the way, talking. Why do you have so many freaking pylons, by the way? Like, why are they inside of the mineral line blocking half your... Anyways. Things like freaking... Things like freaking, uh... Ravagers and, and Adepts, right? Like, Adepts, when they first got added, nobody knew how to play against them. It took months before people realized. Because they have never seen a unit that moved like the Adept before, right? We don't have something like that in StarCraft 2 or, or in StarCraft 1, rather. There wasn't anything like that, really, in WarCraft 3 either. So everyone was a little bit confused about the... The movement patterns of the Adepts and how you were supposed to be dealing with them. We've come a long way over the years. Right now the game is kind of hard to imagine without all of that. Anyways, dude, there are so many probes dying here, but I still feel like this is in favor of the Protals. Because, like, sure, you're losing a bunch of workers, right? There have actually been a lot of probe kills, or SCV kills as well. Uh, that's pretty insane. Anyways, sure, there have been a lot of workers that have gone down. Hey, he's got another form of detection here instead. <laughs> Revelation is gonna be the name of the game. I don't mind it at all. Still feel like Disruptors would be more efficient, but hey. Disruptor, Arkle, Immortal Zealot? It'd be nice. What was I saying, by the way? I was saying something. Anyways, I forgot. Probably wasn't important then, huh? It's gonna be more nukes. Could we have a look at their resources lost? Okay. You know what? Protoss is slowly starting to climb back up in the efficiency there. Is he really? Oh! I was looking... Wait. This is the... This... I almost feel like you put down a proxy... Like a, a macro nexus over here just to return those... those. Oh my god, the Widow Mines from the low ground. Oh yeah, I was saying something about the amount of... Um, about the amount of workers that we've seen here so far in this game. There have been way too many for the Protoss player. Like, I know that not that long ago, last week... No! Jeez! Okay. I know that not that long ago, last week, I casted a game of Haas, intentionally going over 100 probes. And I liked it in that particular scenario, but I don't think you necessarily want to do it as your default in a lot of games. So wait, he's now got 88 workers once again, and he's lost 68. Alright. Well, I see two men on a mission here. Agent 007 and 008. 006? I don't know. Here come the nukes! Man, I am the sickest cameraman in all of StarCraft. Did you see that? Ay, ay, ay. Alright, no, not just kidding. He, he's gonna be able to once again kill another observer. Sorry, observer. Two more nukes, and yeah, I guess you kill a base. I'm still not liking this scenario for Florencio too much, though, because... He's got a lot of money here. Like he's got he's got a lot of money in the bank. That's like my main uh, my main issue here in this game so far. He's got not even close to a max at army. He's got a very small amount of economy as well, all things considered, especially compared to the opponent, right? And he's got no upgrades. 
Look at this. There's no upgrades. Oh my god, there's like no upgrades at all other than drilling claws and the cloaking field for the... Okay. Plus, plus, I mean, he doesn't have that big of an army. So once again, here comes the Protoss Ball. And actually, this time around, this is looking quite a bit better. There comes the, the storm as well on top of the freaking missile turret. That'll teach it. Gonna be able to storm down some of those SCVs as well. Is there gonna be enough to break through over here, though? I think if you just go ahead and kill the SCVs, I think it's gonna be fine. He's stutter stepping with the entire army, which is probably not ideal. Thor on the high ground getting quite a few kills as well. Uh, and even though I think this expansion may very well fall here eventually, it's once again it's gonna be in Jawa's way. Jawa managed to grab himself a ton of unit losses. Good job, man. Maybe a little. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more than you ideally want to, but maybe he's gonna be able to kill the base. Oh my god, the Widow Mines! The Widow Mines! <gasps> Guys, I, I think Disruptors would be good. So Disruptors don't need detection, right? You just like roll them forward, you just go bowling. You just imagine that these Widow Mines over here are pins, right? And you over here just bowl them forward. It's pretty easy, okay? The only thing you have to be concerned by is the fact that you can also accidentally blow up your own army. Uh, that's, that's the only downside. That's what I'm very good at doing. By the way, there is a, uh, a battle cruiser now coming. There's already one out apparently as well. All right. This is, I think, before Florencio realized how good upgrades are. <laughs> upgrades are... Very nice. Well, they're actually not so nice on Widow Mites. Believe it or not, what you're looking at over here on the screen, these are wizards, okay? These are these are Terran wizards. Turns out, Widow Mites actually deal splash damage. Or, sorry, spell damage in StarCraft 2. Well, they deal splash damage too, I guess, for what it's worth. Um, but um, they, they deal spell damage, meaning that they do not get affected by upgrades. So, Widow Mites deal flat amount of damage. They obviously do get affected by armor upgrades. Wait, what? What? Oh. What just... What just killed that Colossus? Oh! Am I just, like, was that on the screen and I just didn't see it? In my defense, okay, they were cloaked. Maybe I just, maybe I just saw it like this or something and then they suddenly died. Okay, there were a couple of ghosts gunning at those Colossi as well. I hope that they were just barely out of vision, but I am known to be quite blind. Anyways, this time around we have a split nuke moving towards the other side. This is on top of a base that's literally not doing anything. This one, oh no. Oh, okay, good response time by the Protoss. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah, this one achieves nothing is what I'm trying to get at. You know what? This Protoss player is playing a pretty impressive game though. I mean, I, I don't like his unit choice, right? But to be fair, uh, I, I'm assuming at least most person or, or most people uh, haven't played against Mass Widow Mind Thor Ghost before, right? It seems like a bit of an odd, an odd style. There's a lot of Widow Minds set up pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Ghost Assassins, the Stealth Assassin boys are being very loud when they try to die, or or when they're in the process of dying, I guess. When they get burned up by a Colossus, it's a bit sad, but... Anyways, Jawa has taken so many bases, for some reason he has not taken the one over here, but I guess that's because of the Widow Mine, that now has two confirmed kills. A couple of Zealots over here do get chipped away at by these uh, Widow Mines as well. They're gonna run to their graves here. Very impressive stuff. Hey, you know what? They grab a siege tank. Not worth it, obviously, but... It's better than having loads of money in the bank. All right. Do we speed it up again? Revelation. It's going to show up. At, uh, you know what? The Colossus. There you go. The Colossus is going to be able to do a decent job. But all of a sudden, a couple of uh, battle cruisers show up. <laughs> they are going to be able to uh, force at least some of this army back. The Arkles, of course, do deal splash damage in a short radius. Oh my... Oh, he's taking so much splash! They do... Oh, you know what? These... These Arkles don't mess around, man. It's not quite gonna be enough here because of the awkward angle that we were fighting at, but that was way more damage than Florencio needed to take. Colossus apparently also really desperately wants to die. I would not want to be a unit in the, uh, the army of Jawa, okay? Like, this guy is... 
He does not care for his units. He's just giving them away. He's gonna go for the Void Ray follow-up. Now remember, this is back when Void Rays weren't really a common unit at all. Void Rays, uh... Yeah, not necessarily the best thing back in the day. I mean, they were pretty good, I guess, in Gold League and whatnot, right? Where you, uh, I've played a little bit of team games as well. You seem to always, if you're playing a 4v4... Ooh! <laughs> you always seem to have at least one guy that's just making uh, loads and loads and loads of, uh, of Void Rays. Usually the one in the corner of the map, so they can certainly be good. It's just that this is back when the Void Ray was quite a bit more expensive and not, not as strong as it, uh, as it is these days. Observer is available, so this time around Protoss is going to be able to get the detection. The only problem is that right now, the better cruisers have arrived. Okay, tactical nuke. Once again, will be used on the base. The probes, though, I've already evacuated. If you guys move back, I'm going to be very sad. No, I don't think so. Is he gonna... Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second he was gonna nuke his own... Uh... <laughs> that was kind of cute, to be honest, man. I thought for a second there he was gonna nuke his own battle cruisers, But he just barely zipped away in time. I think this is also actually... Um... Tactical jump used to be an instant cast. So basically you would like... You know, activate tactical jump and it would just instantly happen, right? And these days there's a one second delay. Oh, sick micro, man. All right. Can you please stop doing this? Hello, sir. Sir, excuse me. You have lost... I want to go out and say probably like 30 or so zealots to this exact move of yours. Florencio hasn't changed the thing about this base. Right now it's mined out as well. I mean, these are not even awful trades anymore, though. But it's just kind of inefficient. Maybe fighting the one in the center, you know? The one that's actually mining? Eh, yeah. No, that's insane. You know what you should do? You should send units again over there. Come on. S yeah, exactly. Who, who cares about the base in the center? Maybe it doesn't even exist. Just send more units over here instead. Perfect. That's the way to do it, man. And maybe at like, if you send in like 50 more zealots, you might even be able to kill the planetary fortress that's doing nothing. It's not even like serving as a drop-off point for minerals and gas. Well, I guess a little bit of gas, but... Uh, only 30 remaining, 38 over there. Yeah, it's not ideal. Okay. Uh, maybe a couple probes somewhere else. You know, a couple, couple, yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit of mining over here in the center. Eh, maybe not a bad idea. I think the window mine actually over here from Florencio may have very well blocked his own command center to come up at the perfect location. Oracle over here. I, I found this actually, um, I found this to be the case in a lot of the Florencio games. It seems like at some point his opponents are like completely exhausted about the game and they just stop playing at like, you know, 100% efficiency. It feels right now that Protoss, yeah, look at this guy. Look at the guy. Wait, did he go AFK? He's got zero actions per minute. All right, so I backed up for a little bit in the replay. We're now on the vision of the Protoss player. I want to see the moment at which he stops doing anything. So, he once again send in the Zealots. And that's it? <laughs> Wait, hold up. Did he just... He just stopped doing anything. His current actions per minute are at zero. Wait, what? He just literally went AFK. Wait. Is <laughs> He's just not here anymore. He just went out to get a drink or something, man. He's like, well, I got to go to the bathroom. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. How long is he AFK for? Battle cruisers are in the main base, I think, by the way. Um, yep, they sure are. Wait. Our Protoss player is just not here anymore. Is this like... Oh, you know what could be? Is this a thing that people do? I think it might be. Hey, he's doing something. He had a couple of... Yeah, he's still at the computer. So he did like... He had like 16 APM there for a second. Is this something that people do where they like... Think they've lost? But they're just not gonna leave the game out of spite? Is this the Protoss equivalent of lifting the structures and hanging them in the corners of the map? Oh my god, I think that's what we're at. 
That That's the only thing that makes sense here. Because he did have like 13 APM there for a second, meaning that he's sitting here and he's actually looking at the screen, right? Well, I mean, this is his vision. He was doing something. Yeah, see? Your probes are under attack. Wait, no, he's... I don't... Hmm. It feels like maybe he's tapping some hotkeys or something. This is his vision, right? And the game goes on. But his APM is still at zero. Oh my god, I'm pretty sure that this is Mr. Florencio going up against someone who's not particularly happy about the situation. Java now has 19 supply remaining. Is this guy really not gonna be here for like the last, I don't know, five minutes or so of the game? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone home? Brain on vacation? Ay ay ay, Florencio with a little bit of trash talk, huh? Little, little tiny bit of trash talk. No, he's realized at this point that his opponent is not doing anything. Oh my god. Alright. So, with that, he's gonna be able to spot the final units and the final structure here of the Protos. And he's gonna be able to uh, finish off the Protos player in a red with a very cheeky strategy. Alright, so let me get this straight. Are they dancing? I felt like they were dancing. Um, let me get this straight. He went Widowmine Thor into Ghosts with Tactical Nuke and then eventually Battlecruisers, but all of that without any upgrades. I'm pretty sure uh, if we look at... Where is it? What's the off key again? There we go. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> all of these units benefit so much from upgrades. It's insane. Now, I hope that you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.